so the first thing I'll say is I always put a damp paper towel underneath the cutting board so as I'm cutting and moving things around the board doesn't slip across the counter uh, safety thing really just a, a simple tip to make sure I don't cut myself As you can see there with the celery, I was going to do it a different way, but I decided I want them wanted them a little smaller. It's definitely personal preference with the size of all these veggies. Uh, the size that I did them, I just, that's how I like them. This onion was kind of gross in the middle there, so I took out the center. It was kind of brown. Uh, we've been getting a lot of onions like that recently. I don't know about anyone else, but uh, it's kind of annoying. And shallots are, I think, an underutilized uh, veggie in the kitchen. Um, they have a little bit of a stronger flavor than an onion. Uh, not as pungent, but uh, they've got a, a more rich flavor. And, you know, just using one potato, like, this entire meal is quite cheap. the skins. Thanks. All right, so here I just put the flour in with the uh, beef pieces. Just coat them. You don't need to be too uh, perfect about this. It's just to get some flour in the pan and cook off the flavor. The other thing it does, as you'll see in a minute here, uh, the flour kind of sticks to the pan um, and as you brown it on a pretty you know medium high heat so it's pretty hot uh, the idea is to get a nice kind of like a coating on the pan so that when you add the water you'll get a nice uh, reduction uh, from the bottom of the pan it will taste really good As you can see here, I'm kind of taking my time putting this in to try to not get uh, too much beef in the bottom of the pan. Because you do want to try to get some browning so you can get some flavor on the, the, edge, the edges of the beef. And as you can see there, you, you know, it's starting to crust over on the pan, which is what you want. You don't want it to burn, but you definitely want, you know, a brown kind of a I, I just call it a pan crust <laughs> uh, uh, so that when like I said when you add the water it will release from the pan and you'll get all that nice flavor Just take 
the beef out once it's somewhat browned. Again, we don't, we're not actually cooking it here, so as you can see, it's not done, but it's just gonna easily finish once you uh, add the liquid and simmer for a long time. And see there, it's a lot darker. Add the veggies, keep stirring. You're not gonna get too much of the cooking done here on the veggies, but you just kind of want to start the process, get the edges and the outside of the veggies just a little bit browned. And I have this on medium high the entire time. Still getting that, uh, that deep color on the bottom of the pan. So this is the beginning of trying to get uh, the flavor off the bottom. As you can see, that's just Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire, however you want to say that. But yeah, Worcestershire is how I say it. And then when there's the water and you'll see uh, in a couple moments here, as I scrape the bottom of the pan, um, it will come clean and release. And at that point, I actually turned up the heat to high so that it'll start to boil. So yeah, you can see now the broth. I haven't even added uh, any kind of beef base or anything yet. And it's browned a little bit, which is what you're looking for. And add all that beef back in. water there you're gonna take that out later anyway and I normally wouldn't put my spices in a bowl like that but it was just easier to film like that sorry about the steam that's in the front of the camera <laughs> I had to put my camera a little close Just putting my potatoes in some water here so they don't brown up uh, late while they're the rest of the soup is cooking. Stew, I should say. And that was simmering for about 20 minutes or so before I put the potatoes in. Really just want to get. Uh, the carrots just about finished at that point, then add the potatoes. Bring it up to boil and then turn it back down, maybe medium low-ish, however your oven works to get it to stay simmering. forgot to put this in earlier. I would have done this earlier through the beef base, but I just spaced it and forgot to put it in. But uh, it doesn't really matter. You're just adding flavor. And that better than bouillon is a really good beef base. I like it a lot better than the cubes or using like actual beef broth uh, that's already packaged. It's a lot cheaper than doing that. And better, actually. And 
so here I'm just tasting, making sure the broth tastes salty enough. It did. that bay leaf out make sure you don't keep it in there test the potatoes and like I said this is about another 20 minutes after the first 20 minutes so total about 40 minutes simmering um, and here I'm just adding uh, flour and water slurry to thicken it a bit um, you can add the amount that I did you can add less you can add more however you thick you want this the stew to be The only thing, if you do this after the fact, just make sure you cook it for five minutes or so to make sure you don't get any flavor of flour in there. It's kind of gross. So. Now, I like it like this. Uh, once again, I like it a tiny thin. It's got a little bit of a thick broth that sticks to the vegetables um, and the meat, but not so thick. It's like the canned style. Um, that stuff to me, it's more like gravy, which I don't, it's not what I'm looking for in this kind of stew. So uh, to me, this is the perfect consistency. Absolutely delicious.